I believe you're closer than you think to living a happy, victorious life. Years ago, we had a little poodle dog that was appropriately named Dinky. Now, Dinky, she was the best. She loved our little apartment because to her, she was so small. It was like a giant farm where she could run from room to room, like field to field. She loved little toys and she'd bring her toys and we'd throw them and she'd run after her toys and come back so proud like a champion in victory. But one special time, I took her toy and I threw it along the ground and it was rolling and she ran so hard. She overtook it and didn't apply the brakes and fast enough with her own legs, she kicked the toy under the TV cabinet and she didn't see where it went. And the little dog stopped. She turned around and looked at me and I mean, gave me the stink eye. She looked at me like, you are mean. Why did you do that to me? And she started running around looking for her toy and eventually she ran in the other room. Something that was about six inches away when she started looking took her all over in a frantic search. Now, yes, I grabbed it and called her and she was happy again. But here's the point. Here's the truth for you and I. You're closer than you think to a life of victory. I believe that the devil works to disorient and make us believe that it's a long, hard journey away from where you are to anything good. My friend, don't give up today. In today's message, I'm going to share with you how to turn worry and the things that you worry about into happiness. That's right. In today's word, we're going to turn worry into happiness. Let's go. Today we're talking about turning those things we worry about the most into something positive. That's right, even turning our worries into happiness. That's what we're gonna to explore together. Two ladies were sitting on a park bench one day and the one said her husband's in the accounting business and every single night the accountant comes home with a headache because he's been crunching numbers all day long. And she said, well, the pay is decent. She wished he did something else. The other lady said, well, you don't know how good you have it. You have it made, sister. My husband's in the manufacturing business. And to tell you the truth, I'd give anything to get him into any other line of work. A bit taken back, the wife of the accountant asked, why, why do you say that? She answered and said, because he's constantly miserable. I mean, totally miserable. The lady replied back and said, well, I didn't know manufacturing was that hard. Oh, she said, it's not hard. In fact, it comes so easy and natural to him, you wouldn't believe it. She said, so what, what does he produce? She said, that's the whole problem. He manufactures worry. He manufactures problems. He manufactures stress. And the best part is his production goes up every single year. I've just about had it. You know, this silly little story is illustrated of people who make their problems, they manufacture their problems bigger and bigger. But yet surveys tell us that today most people are unhappy with their life. That's right, in a recent survey, 42% of people said they're miserable with their station in life. You see, manufacturing problems may be a bigger profession than we realize. At the end of the message today, I'm going to share with you the top 20 things that people are worried about according to recent surveys. Now, as we get started in this message, remember, the devil wants you to stop watching and to throw your hands up in the air and quit and feel like it's all too hard. He wants you to believe it's too late. He wants you to believe it's impossible for you. He wants you to think that it's really quite complicated and difficult. The devil wants you to believe that victory is hard and far away from you. He wants it to feel in your life kind of like this when we talk about having victory. Does this sound simple? Forster Renaissance Energy Transfer fluorescence, renaissance, energy transfer, 
Renaissance energy transfer or electronic energy transfer is a mechanism describing energy transfer between two light sensitive molecules. You got that? Most are going, my head is blown. I mean, that's the way that the devil wants this to look complicated. You have to know advanced math. You have to study detailed formulas just to explain what it is. My friend, the truth is that turning around these things in your life is like opening your eyes. It's right in front of you. I believe today you can have victory and no blessings and begin to live a new and a happy, fulfilling way. Listen to this greatly freeing truth from the 37th Psalm. In the beautiful writing of this specific Psalm, we find clearly explained what is mentioned time and time again in the Psalms. Now, while life might get complicated and situations get worrisome and difficulties rise like floodwaters, God's prevailing truth always sets us free. Listen to Psalm 37, verse 1 and verse 2. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be envious against the workers of iniquity. They will be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. You know, the number one key in the first three words of this reading, fret not thyself, stop wearing yourself down. Hey, zap fret. Fret not. Fret is a st state of anxiety, a state of worry. It's the gradually wearing away. The dictionary says it's like the way that the waves will wear away the seashore. Some of you that are into instruments and stringed instruments like the guitar, you know that the fret boards are where you put your finger to make a note and then you strike that chord and all the pressure, all the vibration comes to that fret board. We're told not to be that one that absorbs all the pressure, one that absorbs all the ang anxiousness and all the pressure in our life. We do this. We bring pressure into our life and we fret. A lot of people are fretting over their past. Friend, there's nothing you can do about the past. But while we know this, we get upset like we feel like we can. No matter what your past looks like, everything changed the day you received Jesus Christ as your Savior. His blood cleanses us or releases us from all unrighteousness. Jesus didn't come down into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him could be saved. Even though many possess the free gift of salvation, they still fret over the past, stirring up and worrying. We fret about so much, and God is telling us we're bringing this on ourselves. Now, why do we bring this on ourselves? Look at what it says in our truth in Psalm 37. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be envious against the workers of iniquity. We fret, we worry, we get upset, we get anxious in our life because of others and what they do. We get aggravated with them. You see, others are making this happen. You're, you're taking others' actions and you're fretting yourself. Evildoers, fret not yourself because of evildoers. Evildoers doesn't need a whole lot of explanation. It causes anxiety and stress when somebody else does the wrong thing. I mean, we're worried about what other people will do. We're worried about what our mate might do at work. We get worried about what our children will do with their friends or at school. There's a lot of people right now who are worried about how everybody else is gonna vote in the upcoming elections. I mean, people doing the wrong thing and we worry about it and we get upset. Well, you know, back when I was learning to drive, one of the very wise lessons that my mother taught me was a simple basic rule. And that rule is called defensive driving. What that means is when you're driving your vehicle, you're looking out for your own safety and you're counting on the other car to do the wrong thing. Now, I learned that before all the cell phone kooks were even out there. 
drive counting on others to do the wrong thing. Wow. But in life, it troubles us when other people do the wrong thing. Now, in this passage, a vital truth here is released over us. Two things happen when we focus our focus on somebody else. Here they are. Two things happen. Upset and envy. That's right. When we focus on others, we get upset and we get envious. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious. Upset is that frustration that comes because of what others do. We don't like the actions we're taking. I get upset by careless drivers. I get upset by mean people. I get upset by hurrying and waiting on other people. I get upset by all this. Envy is when I get jealous because of what I think others have. Now I say what I think others have because remember, you don't really know anybody else's life but your own. But yet we envy what we think we're seeing. We look at another person's life, it's like a mirage. It's an illusion of what we see being out there, but it's not reality. There's a funny old song that kind of ties in along this way. It was sung and written by a fellow named Jimmy Soul. Jimmy Soul titled it, If You Want to Be Happy. He said, if you want to be happy for the rest of your life, never make a pretty woman your wife. He says, my personal point of view is find an ugly girl and get her to marry you. Now, what he's saying in this comedic song is this. What appears and what is real can be two very different things. We look at others and we're upset. We look at others, we get envious. You know, I'm, I'm, I can't believe they did what they did. I'm jealous they have what they have. It's a totally terrible, upsetting place to dwell, fretting, anxious about the behavior of somebody else. So let's pull to the surface the simple solution. Fret not thyself, Psalm 37 again, because of evildoers, nor be envious because they're doing the wrong thing. Verse 2. They shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as an herb. Things will work out because they get theirs. Now, some of you are smiling right now, but listen to verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he'll give thee the desires of thy heart. Now, the first half is the stop doing. Stop the fretting, the anxiety, the worry caused by what others do and what others have. But what do we do instead of worrying? We start focusing on God and good. Trust in the Lord. That means that those things that are under a person's authority, trust, the things under their authority, they're correctly managed. They're properly taken care of. Hey, do we trust our children to do their homework? Do you trust your children to make their bed? You might be thinking, stop talking about that. You're making me fret again. But trust means the one can handle what they have. We fret when we know they're assigned what they're capable of and it's not being taken care of. But when we trust in the Lord, God's got this. Now, it's easy to stand here and say, God's got this. But when life is tough, then what? Let's talk about Jesus when he ministered with his 12 chosen, the ones who walked alongside of him and were with him day and night. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus and his disciples enter a ship. They get out to the middle of the sea. A huge storm kicks up and the ship is in peril. And they go and get Jesus who's sleeping. And they say unto him these words, Master, Carest thou not that we perish? Jesus gets up and tells the wind to stop, and it does. Then Jesus looks at him, and he says, Why are you fretting? Why are you anxious? Why are you worrying about this? Do you have zero faith? Believe in God to handle things. Trust in the Lord, believing that he can and will take care of things. Now, fretting is being upset by everybody and everything, and trust is recognizing God can and God will take care of this. 
when I'm not trusting God. That's where I dive headlong into the pitiful deep pool of upset and worry. Trust God and do good. Trust God and do good. You're upset about others, what they do, what they have. You're upset about things happening. Instead, focus on what you can do. Do good. You know, others may do the wrong thing. You'll see others cheat at work. You be the one who's choosing to be honest. Your family members, they might lie. You do good and be honest. You do the right thing. Hey, your boss might be cruel and mean. You do good and be gracious, just like Jesus. If you focus on the good that you can do, opportunity will open with endless optimism and lead you into an opulent life. Trust in the Lord. God is managing everything perfectly fine. We go ahead and do good. Now, a simple prayer for our daily situations. God, show me the good that I can do right now. In a meeting at work, God, what is the good I can do right now? You're in a store shopping. God, what's the good I can do right now? You're on the phone with a friend. You're at a family gathering. God, what's the good I can do right now? You see, the key here is to stop wearing yourself down and start focusing on God in good. But then we're shown a power choice here that is absolutely revolutionary. And that is this, search more about God. In the text, it's called delight in the Lord. Have you ever started exploring God? The truth is we know so little. It says delight in the Lord. We can't delight in that which we don't know anything about. The creator, God's the creator. God created everything. Now, most people right here jump to the fight, God versus evolution, good versus evil, creation, you know, all that fighting, the man-made lies. But here's the thing. The Creator created everything for our discovery. What will I discover today from the Creator? I have so much more beauty and wonderment to discover. The gift of creation is yet to be opened fully by each one of us. God has put together a beautiful day. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. What will the Creator do today? God's up to something beautiful and creative in your life. God is taking your career to a new level. God is building your abilities in business. God's making your relationships into something beautiful you've never seen before. Those generational curses that have affected your family, a new creation is beginning. Delight in the workings of the Lord. What good thing is God doing in this new day? You know, from a fretter's perch, high atop a pole of anxiety, let's ignore what others are doing and instead find the good we can do and revel in all the new things that God is creating in our lives. Friend, Live in victory today. Here's a word to think about. Responsibility. Responsibility is a duty to deal with something. We have a duty to deal with something. Those children are mine. They're my responsibility. I have a responsibility to manage things in my life. It's my duty to look after them. We all have varying levels of responsibility. But when we look at the ministry, the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we are given a specific responsibility, a responsibility directly assigned to us from God. In 1 Corinthians 14, the Bible says the Lord has given orders that those who preach the gospel should be supported by those who accept the gospel. So the illustration of the scripture is from the temple where people gave the first tenth or the tithes and here's how it's illustrated. You, you know that it's always been taken for granted that those who work in the temple live off the proceeds of the temple and that those who offer sacrifices eat their meals from what's been sacrificed. Along the same lines is what the master directed for those who spread the message of the gospel to be supported by those who believe the message. The Lord commanded 
that those who proclaim the gospel receive their living by the gospel. Now, we who believe have been placed upon us a responsibility, a responsibility from the Lord. Let's receive that responsibility today and honor our Lord's wishes with our giving. Otherwise, rather than living a blessed life of honoring God and rising to our responsibility, we fall into ear responsibility or lacking a sense of being answerable to a higher authority. May the Lord today bless each one of us as we take the responsible route. On the first day of the week, every one of you, as God has prospered, now you can give your offerings today online at newlifebegins.com forward slash give. Let's love the Lord and rise to the responsibility. God bless you for giving today. I told you I'd give you the top 20 things people worry about. You ready? Here they are. Number 20, people are worried about the area they live in and crime levels. I mean, what's become of this town? Number 19, they worry about their pet's health. You get a dog to calm your anxiety, now you have more anxiety because you're anxious about the dog itself. Wow! Number 18, is my dress sense any good? Am I tacky? Hopefully you don't say yes. Number 17, people worry about meeting work targets and goals. Can I get all this done? Will, 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 will I even have anything I can go to do? What's happening? I can't catch up. Number 16, people worry about whether they're a good parent. Raising kids, right? I would say I'm probably not a good parent, but thank God for compensation and their mother took care of everything. Hey, number 15, people worry about a friend or family member they've fallen out with. Uncle Jimmy, the fight is on. Number 14, people worry whether I'll find the right partner. Hard thing. Number 13, whether my partner still loves me. Wow, if you have to ask, you might be in trouble. Number 12, whether or not I'm attractive. Hey, definitely yes, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Number 11, I need to find a new job. Number 10, I'm generally unhappy. Hey, the joy of the Lord, look up, you're loved, my friend. Number 9, paying their rent, only pops up every month. Number 8, people worried about their physique, or shall we say, what's left of it. But darling, you look marvelous, okay? Number seven, wrinkles are aging their appearance. You don't look old for a fossil. Hey, quit joking, right? Number six, people are worried about job security. Number five, they're worried about financial issues. Number four, they're worried about their diet. Number three, they're worried about low energy levels. Hey, never during church and church, they're wide awake. Number two, they're worried about their savings, their financial future. And number one thing that people are worried about is getting old in general. Hey, definitely affects everybody, but you know, go ahead and age and skip getting old. These are the top 20 worries from thousands of people surveyed. Hope you enjoyed them.